topic of volatile organic compounds and the adverse health effects that they have on us. The reason I chose this topic is because I plan to obtain a degree, a PhD actually, in environmental toxicology, which this directly relates to. So, as you, as you may know, life on Earth does not exist without water or oxygen. Every day when we wake up, we don't think about what we are breathing in and the, or the air quality that we have been exposed to. Worldwide, air quality has become a really big topic for researchers to research and study. Nationally, larger cities are the ones to be directed to because of the amount of pollution Houston ranked at the top of this because of all of the um, all of the refineries and stuff that we have in Houston and the surrounding area. In cities such as Chicago, New York City, they have mass transit. They are less likely to be, you know, researched on the lower end because the mass transit system takes down the amount of pollution that is emitted. Houston has had has plenty of times been one of the cities to try to get converted into mass transit. As you know, we only have the metro that does not travel all across the city, which is, you know, bad because the more cars we have on the road, the more emissions that we have. And that's also, you know, directed to VOCs. The purpose of this, the purpose of this speech is to inform you all of the adverse health effects that VOCs have. What are VOCs? VRCs are volatile organic compounds which have high vapor pressures. So that means that in the ordinary temperature of a room, which is 68 degrees to 72 degrees Fahrenheit, they are um, they will be emitted to the air as a, a gas. So, and these high vapor pressures come from their low boiling points, which is if they were a liquid or a solid state, they are easily converted into a gas, to gas state. Examples of VOCs, they are human-made and then they are naturally made anthropogenic, which consists of chemicals that you use in your home, like paint, household everyday chemicals like Clorox and things of that such. And generally, anything that we use at a certain amount can have adverse health effects on you. Even water, if you drink too much water, it can have an adverse health effect on you because of the amount of levels of water that your body is supposed to obtain. What are these uh, adverse health effects? You will experience two types of adverse health effects. They can be acute and chronic. Acute means short term and chronic is long term. The acute adverse health effects that you can that you will go through are fatigue, dizziness, nausea, headaches, um, allergies, irritation to the skin, and respiratory infection. The chronic adverse health effects that you can experience or will experience is kidney and liver damage, CNS damage, which is your system, uh, central nervous system, um, asthma, cancer, and cell enzyme, cell and enzyme changes in your body. Every day when you go outside in Houston, you may smell a little stench like um, in the air, and that's you know from sewage, sewage or pollution in the air. Um, I think it was just like last week on the news, there was a chemical plant here in Houston that blew up. And I'm like, well, you know, I didn't, I didn't hear about it, I didn't know about it, but every day we, we're living in this environment of the pollution, we don't know what we are being exposed to. The um, other like actual chemical products that we are experienced to or exposed to on the daily are like VTEX compounds such as benzene, toluene, ethyl benzene, and xylene. And toluene, if you look on the back of like a paint, spray paint bottles, nail polish, you'll see the levels of to that toluene is actually in those. So that's why when you, some of you ladies, when you all go to the nail shop, the the nail, the people who paint your nails, they have masks on their face. They don't offer you a mask, but they have masks on their face. Everyone is being exposed to this. So, due to um, the adverse health effects that we are exposed to, there is a governor body that has to regulate these. That governor body is called the EPA. 
EPA, which is the Environmental Protection Agency. And um, they're responsible for protecting and improving the nation's air quality, water quality, and soil quality. Within the um, EPA, the, actual, the federal government has passed an act called the Clean Air Act, which you all can go get more information on. And over the years, amendments to the Clean Air Act have projected to be 230,000 improvements or um, which is a prevent early deaths by the year 2020. As you now know, VOCs can be dead at a certain amount of exposure. In order to reduce your chance of being affected, um, it's said to be by limited amounts of those chemicals, household chemicals, fabuloso, Clorox, Windex, and when you are done with those bottles, even if it's about this much left to dispose of them, to get them out of your house. And then also, um, ventilation, if you have any control of the ventilation that you are being like in this building or at home, which you have control of, to have someone to come out and check your ventilation systems just so that you know that you are breathing, every, the air that you're breathing in is good air because as you, like I said, Houston is already at the top of the list for high pollution. And for more information, if you all want to go in depth on this to see about um, indoor air quality and outdoor air quality, because the topic is so wide that they had to split them into two different, um, two different forms, you can go to epa.gov. Thank you.